Welcome to section 2.3, Continuity, where we'll be discussing in part one, continuity at a point. In this video, we're gonna be looking at an ugly, ugly graph right here. And notice I'm using a blue pointer because this graph is red. So let's take a look at this piecewise function. We can see that it is definitely split into three distinct pieces. There's some holes and jumps in this graph. The only thing we don't have is the graph shooting off to infinity anywhere. But we can clearly see, even if we don't even know the definition of continuous, we can definitely see that this graph is not continuous. I can't draw this graph or trace it without running into an issue right here when x is negative 4. I have this huge jump. Then, as we keep going, we are continuous through here. It's a nice smooth sailing until we hit when x is 2. Then we have another huge jump. We keep going, we keep going, and then we have a hole in our graph when x is 4. Those are three big issues in our graph, when x is negative 4, when x is 2, and when x is 4. I don't even need to give you the calculus definition for you to understand that, hey, there's an issue here, here, and here. Because it's not smooth sailing. We can't trace this graph without running into an issue at those three x values. Those are points of discontinuity. We would say that the graph is not continuous or discontinuous at x equals negative 4, x equals 2, and at x equals 4. In this video, we'll talk about exactly why, mathematically, the graph is not continuous at those three points, and then we will prove using limits and function values why it's not continuous, and then we'll also prove why at certain other points, such as when x is negative 1, our graph is nice and continuous at those points. So buckle up, let's go into the calculus definition of continuity at a point. Here's the calculus definition of continuity at a point. We say that a function f of x is continuous at x equals c, c is our x value, and then it says iff. Mathematically this means if and only if. We use this a lot in proofs. The first thing that has to be true is that f of c is defined, meaning that when we plug f, I'm sorry, when we plug c in, we have a well-defined y value. There is a coordinate point c comma f of c. The second thing that needs to be true is that the limit as x goes to c of our function exists. That means that we have to check both the left and right sided limits Make sure they both exist and are the same value in order for the overall limit to exist. Lastly, f of c needs to equal that limit. So if there's an issue with 1 or 2, we clearly can't have c. So our function needs to be defined when we plug in c at that point. The limit needs to exist, so we need to check the left and right sided limits, make sure they're the same for the overall limit to exist. And lastly, so long as 1 and 2 are good, the third thing is what we found in number 1 and what we found for the limit in number 2, they have to be the same value. If all three of these hold, we can say that our function is continuous at x equals c. Let's go back to our ugly graph. We want to know, is this function f of x, is it continuous at the point x equals negative 4? Then we need to explain our work. We can explain just using mathematical notation. All right, the first thing that we need to be continuous, number one, and I'll label them just like we did before in the previous page, we want to first evaluate f at negative 4. I don't have a function to plug in, so I'm just going to look on our graph. When x is negative 4, what is our y value if there is any? The y value would be 3 because the coordinate point negative 4 comma 3 is on our function. So f of negative 4 is 3. It is defined. We've passed the check for number 1. Let's take a look at the second one, which is the limit. Now, I'm going to write out the limit as x goes to negative 4. I don't know what this is yet. In order to know what this is, I need to look at both the left-sided limit as we approach negative 4 from the left, and we need to look at the right-sided limit 
the limit as x approaches negative 4 from the right. We need to make sure those both exist and are the same number. All right, let's take a look at the limit. As x approaches negative 4 from the left, that would be 3. And then our limit as we approach x equal, uh, as x approaches negative 4 from the right, our limit is negative 2. Remember, limits are y values, and they don't always have to equal the like filled in point, right? It's about what we're approaching. So this limit down here from the right is negative 2. Now, while both one-sided limits exist, they're not equal. Therefore, our overall limit and I, you don't want to put like equals does not exist. I'm just going to write does not exist. So while we passed the check for number one, we did not pass the check for number two. We can't even go to number three because clearly this doesn't equal this, right? Three does not equal does not exist. So our function value and our limit are not the same. So our explanation will be f of x is not continuous at x equals negative 4 because the limit as x approaches negative 4 does not exist. There may be multiple reasons that a function is not continuous at a point, so we had to explain and give the reason why, because the limit does not exist. It violated the second rule of continuity that the limit has to exist. Let's look at another coordinate point. Let's take a look and answer the question, is our function continuous at x equals negative 1? When x is negative 1, we can clearly run our, like, our finger or our pencil or whatever and trace right through it. It looks like it's continuous here. So we know that the answer will be yes, but let's prove why mathematically. The first thing we need to do for our three check, checkpoints or our checklist of continuity is we need to first evaluate at that coordinate point. What is f of negative 1? f of negative 1 is 4 because the coordinate point 1 negative 1 comma 4 is on our function. So we have passed the check for the function is defined at that point. The second thing we need to do is find the overall limit as x approaches negative 1. Okay, so I wrote out the steps that we need to take, we need to check both the left limit and the right-sided limit as x goes to negative 1. The left limit would be 4, and the limit as we approach negative 1 from the right is also 4. So both of our one-sided limits exist and are the same number, therefore our overall limit exists and it is 4. So we have passed number 2 on our checklist. Once you get past those two, number 3 is very simple. We need to ensure that our function value and our limit as we approach that value are the same. They are. So the third one is saying f at that c, so f at negative 1, does that equal the limit as x approaches our c value of negative 1? Yes, it does, because 4 equals 4. They are the same number. So our final answer is yes, f of x is continuous there. And here's what we can write. We can say that f of negative 1 equals the limit as x goes to negative 1. This is implying that they both exist and are defined. And then just for added measure at the end, we'll put what number they equal. So this is a very simple mathematical sentence that encompasses all of these reasons. It's saying that because the function value and the limit as we approach that value are equal, they must be the same number. They, it's implying that they exist and are defined, and they equal 4. I added this at the end to show that they're the same number. Let's take a look at one more point of contention. Clearly, x equals 2, we're not continuous there, but that's very similar to when we looked at negative 4. Let's take a look at why we're not continuous at x equals 4. 
Okay, the last one we'll look at is, are we continuous when x equals 4? So now our c value is 4. That's where we're concerned. That's our point that we want to test if we're continuous at. All right, the first thing we do in our checklist for continuity is we take a look at the function value at 4. So what is f of 4? I don't know, because it doesn't work. <laughs> it's undefined, right? There's no y value when f is, you know, when, when x is 4. There's no y value. So we actually say that that is undefined. Now from this point, we're done. You know, we already violated the first checklist. I am just going to show you real quick that the limit does exist, right? So this is extra. You don't have to keep going once you violate something. But I do just want to show, and I'm just going to sketch this out real quick, that the limit as x approaches 4 does actually exist, right? The limit from the left is 2, and the limit from the right as we approach 4 from the right is also 2. So like the limit exists, you know? So, you know, we passed like that part of our checklist. So if we did this one first, you know, whatever, we would have passed it, but our function's undefined there. So again, this is extra. We already violated number one on our checklist. So clearly we can't go to number three. Undefined does not equal two. Anyway, the, what we would write, is f of x continuous at x equals four? No. We answered the question. Let's explain. f of four is undefined. So we say that a function value is undefined. We say that a limit doesn't exist. That's the difference in wording. We would not say that f of 4 does not exist. We would say a function value is undefined, and we reserve the words does not exist for limits. All right, so we've looked at a graph and talked about continuity or discontinuity at a point. However, what if we just looked at something algebraically and didn't graph it? When we have a rational function like this, when x is in the denominator, we are discontinuous when the denominator is zero, right? So we cannot divide by zero. So what this is really asking us is where are we undefined? And in this specific case, because it's a rational function, where is the denominator equal to 0? So let's factor this denominator. We don't care about the numerator. Let's factor this denominator. So to factor it, we'll take out a 3. And we'll be left with x squared minus 4. So we'll factor the denominator. And then I'm going to set it equal to 0 because I want to know when is it 0. Then this is a difference of squares, so we can factor that into x plus 2 and x minus 2. All right, cool. So then what we see is there are three factors here. So we set each one of them to 0 in order to find where our denominator is 0. So I'll set 3 to 0. I'll set x plus 2 equals 0, and I'll set x minus 2 equals 0. This doesn't give us any solutions. This gives us the solution of negative 2. This gives us the solution of 2. But wait, can't the x plus 2s cancel top to bottom? Yes, but that doesn't cancel out the fact that negative 2 and 2 still both make our denominator 0. We'll get more into the canceling. Um, in our next video with specific types of discontinuities. But what we know is that our f of x is not continuous or discontinuous when x is plus or minus 2. So we would say f of x is discontinuous at x equals plus or minus 2, or you could just list them instead of using the plus or minus. Again, we're discontinuous there because this is a rational function, and that type of function is undefined when our denominator equals 0. Any other x value we would be continuous at. The only issues, again, are at plus or minus 2 because it makes the denominator 0. All right, in this next example, we have f of x equals the tangent of x, and we want to know, once again, where is f of x discontinuous? 
Discontinuous means where is it undefined? That's in general what it means. So this is not a rational function. We are not looking for when a denominator is zero. There's not really a denominator, but we can figure out where is the tangent undefined. All right, we remember that tangent is really sine over cosine. And so I guess we sort of are looking for when the denominator is zero. You can think of it like that. So we want to know where is cosine zero. And if we think about our unit circle, here it is. I had to insert it real quick. Um, we want to know where is the tangent undefined. Basically, where is cosine zero, right? Because we'd be dividing by zero. Cosine is the x value. So cosine zero here, therefore the tangent's undefined at pi over two. Cosine is also zero, the x value is also zero, down here at three pi over two. All right, so at every single time we have a pi over two. So at one pi over two, three pi over two, five pi over two, seven pi over two. As we keep going around, every time we hit a, a, an odd number pi over two, our tangent is undefined, we're discontinuous. The way that we can write this is we can get a little creative. So we're discontinuous every time we hit like an odd pi over two. So we can write that as anytime x equals, and I'll just pick a random letter, k pi over two. And what is k? k is any odd integer, one pi over two, three pi over two. If we keep going, that's five pi over two, seven pi over two. So where k is an odd integer. Now, if you just answered at pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2, that's totally fine as well. I'm just giving a super mathematically correct answer. All right, the moral of the story is we learned today what continuity at a point means. We have a checklist of three different things when we're graphing. And when we're looking algebraically, if we're, continue, if we're trying to find any points where we're not continuous, we have to see where our function is undefined, where the denominator equals zero, or where that specific trigonometric function is undefined. All right, this is our last example in this video. Again, we want to know where is f of x discontinuous. So again, we want to know where is it undefined. Now this is a rational function again, right? X is in the denominator. So basically we wanna know where is the denominator equal to zero? Where does the denominator equal zero? So we're gonna take x squared plus nine and we're gonna let it be zero. Now, can we factor this? Uh, at first glance, it might look like it's a difference of squares, but it's not. It's actually a sum of squares, which is not factorable. And so we can't factor it. So I'm going to just look at it algebraically. I'm going to subtract 9 from both sides. And if we take the square root, right, we're left with plus or minus 3i. If you don't remember i, that's totally fine. If you stopped here because you're like, wait, hold up, I can't take the square root of a negative, you're good. Uh, this is an imaginary number, right? So I wouldn't worry too much about this right here. You can't do this. So this does not give us any answers, right? There's no solution in the real number system. There's no number x that when we square it and then add 9 that we would get 0. It's just not going to work. No matter what number you put in here, when you square it, it's positive and then you add 9 to it. You're never going to make this denominator 0. So where is f of x discontinuous? Nowhere. It's continuous everywhere because the denominator can never be 0. So we would say f of x is continuous for all x.